all white people are racist. Each and every one of them. I want to preface this video by saying, yes, I am white and I might not understand the black struggle completely, but I know when something's wrong when I see it. And this person has a really warped view of the world. I've made a lot of these I do not like videos. Normally they're about petty things like trying to get big on YouTube by using scummy tactics. Those videos pale in comparison to this one because this person is just filled with hate. His name is Ghazi Kodzo. The community has dubbed this guy Black Hitler and it makes sense because holy shit, does he not like white people. I think it's ironic because his YouTube URL is uh, youtube.com slash smile tone. I mean, you can see by his dislike bars that <laughs> he's probably not spreading a whole lot of smiles. While editing this video, I did some more digging and I found out that smile tone was the name of his channel before he changed it to Gazi Kodzo. And it looks like he did a collab with uh, two white girls. What's up? We're the Wayne Girls, as you know, and we've got a special guest today. It's Smile Tone! Hey all! Isn't he cute? <laughs> I think it's pretty evident from the videos that I'm about to show you that this person does not see white people as equals to black people. And I know that he would argue by saying, no, all white people see all black people as inferior to them, so we're just trying to rise up to their level. When really, I think he thinks of white people as trash. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with loving yourself and being proud of who you are and being proud of the way you look, but it's a little bit different when you see people who are different than you, whether it be race or religion or whatever, and uh, you hate them solely because of that. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't a black struggle because I know that there is. Um, racism is still prevalent in the United States against black people, but it's also prevalent in the United States against white people. It's just a lot more people like to ignore the second part. Let's take a look at one of his videos named Yes, All White People. Aquamia. Hey, I'm back, I'm back. Ready to attack, 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 I'm back. I'm back, ready to attack. So I took a three week, almost kind of month break, y'all. It's been crazy. I had a birthday. I'm 25 now, back in the face. I gotta say, I admire Ghazi's exuberance. His, um, <laughs> he's very expressive. All white people are racist. Each and every one of them. That's not fair. I'm not racist. Where? Everyone grows up in their own little bubble, right? With their with our own experiences, viewing the world from their own little keyholes. And because everybody grows up differently, we might not understand some people who grow up in a drastically different environment than we did. And it might be difficult for us to communicate with these people. And this leads to ignorance, which is fine for the most part, as long as you are aware of your ignorance and it doesn't lead to hate. Everyone is judgmental and everybody is a little bit prejudiced to some degree. And I think it stems from just discomfort, really. And it stems from fear. We as a people like to stick in our own little comfortable bubbles. And it takes some bravery to stick a hand out and be like, hey, I know that you're different than me, but I would just like to talk to you for a second and get to know you a little bit better. People just like to be comfortable, and I think that's normal, but for some people, it gets to a certain degree where maybe they've had an experience in their life that makes them think a certain way. You know, maybe a white person was mean to you and you're black, and so you get this idea in your head where all white people are like this one individual that you met. You might know logically that that isn't the case, but it still might be like embedded in your brain, you know, that memory of that one instance. Or you might hear certain things from other people saying that this happened to them, or this happened to someone else, and you might make your conclusions that way by saying, oh, well, I can name off a few instances that happened to X, Y, and Z because of this reason, so this is why everyone is like this. It's people like Ghazi that are really trying to stop the progress. And I know that he would say the opposite, that he's the only one that's trying to help people progress by, I don't know, somehow beating the sense into white people through verbal abuse. You owe me reparations. I do. Why that? Because I have benefited from the wealth that was stolen from mm -hmm. you, Tell as it. have all my ancestors, um, the ones who owned slaves and the ones who did not, the Jews in, uh, the white Jews in Hungary. Everyone. You better tell on the white Jews. Say that again. I don't think that's the way to go, man. I really just don't think that this is working. But Gazi, don't make such general statements. 
statements. It's wrong. Don't make general statements, Gazi. Okay, so all general statements are not incorrect, right? All rocks are hard, all water is wet, and a lot of you understand, right, through systems of oppression that all black people are oppressed, right? And you understand that all white people have white privilege. You get that, right? Those are general statements that are true. So all general statements are not false. So, oh God. Okay, so his argument here is that not all general statements are wrong. Like all rocks are hard. <laughs> Such it is this is such an infantile argument, man. I mean, he is kind of correct where there are some some general statements that are true, I guess. But you can't paint people's opinions black and white like that. That's just not the case. It's not. That's not even. It's like this way of thinking is so false. It's like it's almost laughable. Just. Oh my God. Or post-traumatic colonial syndrome, right? Which equals a lot of self-hate and anti-blackness within us and also makes us glorify and love whiteness, right? That we want to be more and more white. We want to be the exceptional Negro. We want to have the things that they have, right? Because all black people are oppressed and we are a colonized people. We see a lot more white people in big blockbuster movies. We see a lot more white people in positions of power, but it doesn't mean that that isn't slowly changing because it is. With hip hop being more widely expressed and accepted through all cultures in the United States and being one of the most powerful and prominent music genres out there right now and black people being at the forefront of this genre. I think times are changing and they will keep changing and progress is being made whether you want to deny it or not. But that doesn't mean there isn't problems and I know that there are problems but holy shit. It's people like Ghazi that just think the world is so black and white, right? He wants to live a hundred years ago. There is a fuck ton of white people in poverty and there is a fuck ton of black people in poverty. So putting a blanket statement out there like all black people are oppressed and all white people are privileged, just, it paints this picture in your head that is just completely it's just not true, you know? The world is so much more complicated than that. All black people are oppressed and we are a colonized people. Now, as a colonizer, you are growing up in that same kind of reality, but in a different spectrum, different, different spectrum. So you think, yes, all black people are savages, all black people are horrid, I am amazing, I am white, I have all the things and I need to help them and da 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 right? I don't really get too much into the white psyche, don't care. He just said, I don't get too much into the white psyche, I don't care. Hello, people, like, this, he's destroying his own argument. He's refusing to put himself into other people's shoes. As black people, we really need to understand the realities of the world, not as which we would like them to be, or we try to imagine them to be, but what it actually is, okay? It's funny how he says this, because uh, I would, I would say the same thing to you, Ghazi, that yes, the world isn't how you imagine it, it's actually far different than that. This is actually simple pathology, y'all. Y'all need to crack open a book. Didn't I tell you to read post-traumatic slave syndrome? Didn't I tell you to read that book? Didn't I tell you to read Urugu? Didn't I tell you to read that book? Get that girl, get that book out. Okay, so it seems like he's read a lot of books that were um, aligned with this point of view. I mean, you can find books that are aligned with any point of view, whether it be a super racist, hateful point of view or a balanced, rational point of view. Um, it doesn't mean that they're all correct. Anybody can write a book. Fucking, didn't Donald Trump write a book? Okay, in your brain, right? When I pick up this glass and I drink, something in your brain mimics that exact movement, right? In your brain, all the things in your brain that activate when you do that, you do that as well, right? When you see another human being doing that. That is the basis of empathy. That is the basis of human connection, is that action happening in your brain, that mimicking action in your brain, girl, okay? Guess what they found out about white people? Nothing, none of those connected things happen. The basis of humanity, the basis of human connectivity, girl, the basis of empathy. White people do not have with other people, especially black people. What the fuck kind of research is this? Because it's absolutely not true. I am, I am astonished. I am stunned. I watched the movie Moonlight and that movie hit me so hard, man. I mean, I'm not gay or black and I felt for the characters. I thought it was such a powerful film. He, he's practically making the argument that all white people are sociopaths. I watched the movie Lion recently, which is about a young Indian boy 
um, who got separated from his family, from his brother, and he was raised by white people. Uh, be, uh, but I don't know how this happened, because obviously all white people don't care about anybody else. Oh, and this is a true story, by the way. This actually happened. These white people raised these Indian boys. And it is such a powerful film. And I was in tears at moments. And it's a true story. And they show the pictures of the people. And a little video at the end of him reuniting with his family. It's one of the most amazing films I've ever seen. I also want to express that I think it's stupid when white people try to, you know, prove that they're not racist by saying, Oh, I have a black friend. Or, um, I'm... I dated a black person once, or, you know, saying any of this stupid stuff, you know, I listen to rap music, or I'm cultured. You shouldn't have to prove it. It's just so stupid. If you have to prove it, then it's probably not even worth trying to prove it. You know, the person that you're trying to prove it to, it's probably just not even worth it at that point. If you're speaking to someone of a different race who is open-minded and rational, then you shouldn't have to worry about that. You should never have to prove that you're not racist. I mean, it makes sense though, doesn't it? Why people would want to do that. This is kind of a stupid example. Say someone were to come up to you and say, you are a pineapple. You aren't a human being. You are a pineapple. And I don't care what you say, you are a pineapple. And you try to convince them, right? Look, I have arms. I have a mouth. I have eyeballs. I have a skull. I have to be human being. What's wrong with you? But the person will just keep saying back to you, no, you're a pineapple. I don't care what you say, you're a pineapple. It gets maddening, doesn't it? If someone's saying that you are a certain way when you're not, there's really no point arguing with them. Hate breeds hate and kindness breeds kindness, um, at least most of the time. If someone goes up to you and they start screaming at you and you start screaming at them back, Nothing's going to be resolved. It's just gonna end with torment and two people who are frustrated with each other. You don't have a reason to call her a bitch. We're not here to go back and forth. We want to rectify the situation. We need a public apology. A public apology for Yes, your business. No, ma'am. You don't have an option here. You don't have an option. Your two options are to apologize now. Or we shut it down. And we shutting it down. He wants to be shut down. You want to be shut down? to be shut down. That's what's going to happen. The hardest thing in the world is to be provoked by someone with hate and then respond with kindness. You know, it's just against your instincts. When someone screams at you, you feel like you need to defend yourself. But I think it's really important to take a step back and think, you know, what should I do in this situation? What are they thinking and what should I say that won't escalate the situation? and instead diffuse it. But white people do not like to talk about race and do not like to deal with race because it makes them uncomfortable. And as a privileged people, they don't like to feel uncomfortable. Nobody likes to talk about race because it makes them uncomfortable. You know? People don't like being provoked just naturally. That's just how human beings are. How is this a strictly white thing? It makes no sense. Okay, here's another video of his named... <laughs> Get ready for this one. <laughs> are interracial relationships rape? In prison, if a correctional officer and a prisoner, you know, have sexual relationships, it is, they're not supposed to. A correctional officer is not supposed to have a sexual relationship with a prisoner. Now, if a correctional officer and a prisoner have sex, the correctional officer will be charged with rape. Even if the prisoner says it was consensual, consensual, yeah. <laughs> Because the prisoner cannot say it was consensual because there's a different power structure. There is a different, there is an unequal power structure. There is the correctional officer, the prison guard who's up here, and the prisoner who is down here. Dating someone of a different race is not, is not the same thing as a correctional officer in prison dating a prisoner. It is not. It is so different. Oh my God. We understand that we live in a world that is built off of white power and that white people are up here with this power. African people are oppressed every day by this power. African people live in a society that tells them every day that white people are smart, white people are beautiful, white people are powerful, white people are superior. 
every day that is told to us through advertisements, through books, through the school system, through entertainment, through media, through music, through every instance of our life, through the judicial system, through the employment system, it is telling us that white people are great, white people are powerful. So when you have little African boys who are 12 years old, who are 13 years old saying that they want to be with a white girl, it's probably because they saw Frozen. It's probably because they see all these Disney movies with these beautiful white princesses. This guy has not seen The Princess and the Frog. Gotta get cultured, bro. And what about Mulan, huh? I mean, one of the most recent and one of the best Disney princesses, in my opinion, is Moana. And she's brown-skinned. It has nothing to do with being white. It has everything to do with where these princesses live. It all depends on their location. The thing that I hate about this sort of thinking is everything has to do with race. When it comes to an African and a white person being together, it's rape. It's flat out rape. I don't want to come across like I'm saying, no, there's absolutely nothing to do with white power, right, white privilege in today's society because there is. I'm just saying that it's dying with the older generations dying off and the newer generations coming in. I would say in 20, 30 years, the world's gonna look a lot different and we'll have different problems. Maybe North Korea will have nuked us by then. Who knows what will happen? The United States could just be a big wasteland by then. And all this stupid race war shit will look so just meaningless and stupid when the entire world is covered in dust. And I hope that when this time does come, Ghazi finds himself in a situation where he is dependent on white people to survive and he'll have to put aside his prejudices and he'll be forced to erase his predisposition about white people and it'll be a beautiful moment. It'll be like in a Disney movie where someone realizes their flaws and they, you know, they reach out to someone they never thought they would. I might be giving him the benefit of the doubt here. Maybe he would rather die than cooperate with a white person. <laughs> Who knows? This white person has resources over the African. So the African becomes dependent on this white person. Even if the African, let's say, is a basketball player and the white girl is some waitress. Okay, this makes no sense. He's making the argument that a very famous and rich basketball player who is black has less power than, than a waitress who is white. What? Money breeds power, bro. What are you talking about? You can't even say you love a white person. You can't say you love your white husband or white wife. You can't say you love your white girlfriend or or um, white boyfriend because you're not in an equal, you don't live in an equal world. Here's a video he named, white people stop adopting black children. So I've been seeing articles and news about white people and white celebrities adopting black children. So I wanted to make this video. White people, come here. Stop adopting black children. You wanna know why? Look at this example. Charlize Theron, okay? Charlize Theron is a horrible colonizing South African mother to African children, okay? Yeah, because those black children are so much better off in their adoption agencies. It, it's so much better to have them be you know, without parents, without guidance, than to have them be adopted by the evil white people of America. Especially the white, rich, privileged ones who can give them anything in the world. What? You know what? Yeah, I agree with Ghazi. Fuck progress. Fuck accepting human beings for, you know, the fact that they're human beings. We should judge everyone based on the color of their skin. This child clearly wants to be white okay and this is an obvious example of cultural neglect and not surrounding the child with their own images and role models of their own people this kidnapping i mean adoption is an extension of colonialism yeah because it's impossible to teach these children about black culture because they have white parents i mean yeah they won't be raised within this culture they won't be brought up in a all black environment, which I'm sure Ghazi hopes every single black person is. Ghazi wants the divide between white and black people to be huge. Any sort of 
intermingling between the two is a no-no, people. Okay, the last video we'll be looking at today is called... <laughs> oh god. Why cop killers are black heroes. Yes, that is actually a title of a YouTube video. Why cop killers are black heroes. Now the police have been killing African and colonized people left and right, but now with video footage, we see it on a daily basis. We saw what they did to that sister's boyfriend when he was just reaching for his identification. We saw what they did to that brother who was just selling CDs. We saw what they did to a child who was just walking home from the playground, okay? And then Barack Obama wants to call these cop killers, okay, these African heroes, these African martyrs, okay, of the African resistance, cowards. Yeah, so that makes it okay for any random black guy to walk up to a police car and shoot the policemen just out of nowhere. Yeah, you're right, Ghazi. Fight the oppression. If you're black, just walk up to a cop and shoot him directly in the face. Make sure that he's dead, too. Um, because it's not like there's any black people on the police force. And if there are, well, I guess they just don't see the world the way we do and they need to be killed as well. <laughs> oh, God. I feel sick even making a joke like agreeing with this guy. It's just sad, man. Let me tell you who the fucking coward is, Barack Hussein Obama. A coward is an armed, organized force that murders unarmed black people. The coward is an armed, organized force force organization who murders African children on the playground, African children in their bed, an African woman on a road trip, Sandra Bland. That is a coward. I do have to say this, however. I admire his, his fire, his tenacity, his, you know, his, uh, the fact that he's really trying to make a change because he believes so deeply that there is a problem here. And I mean, to some degree there is. I'm not saying there isn't, there is. But I think he's, he's, I think he's going about it the wrong way. If you want to make a change, that's fine. Make a positive change though, you know? Basically, I guess the message I'm trying to get across here is just be kind to one another. That's really the answer to all of this. I read an article a while back about a black man who was able to disband an entire community of neo-Nazis and get them to think differently by doing one thing, and one thing only. He spoke to them like people, and he convinced them to like him and see him as a person, as a human being. And their mindsets changed. Their entire view on the world was just, you know, it crumbled. And all it took was one friendly black man. And he did something that was unheard of. It was amazing. The courage that it took to do that is just mind boggling. That's really all it takes. The more you find things in common, the less you have in contrast. Amazingly, Davis even began attending Klan rallies. He says it was all in the name of research for his book, Clandestine Relationships. A lot of times we don't agree with everything, but at least he respects me to sit down and listen to me. Davis says he didn't uh, set out to Taylor. befriend any Klansmen, but over Sorry, the years, Taylor. it happened. And uh, this is uh, Roger Kelly. Kelly was the Imperial Wizard of Maryland. Today, Roger Kelly is out of the Klan. Do you think that you had something to do with Roger Kelly leaving the Klan? Oh, I know I did. It was an exchange of information that made him rethink his ideology. Anyways, guys, that will do it for today's video. If you like this video, please make sure to like it and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you like this hat and if you like this shirt, I started a clothing line and it's named Alien Clothing. So go over there and check it out if you haven't already. Got some pretty cool designs over there that you might like. And uh, we started up Hot Wet Soup again. That's my podcast. Go check that out. We try to make videos every week if we can. And I'll see you guys in the next video.